Good things come to those who wait. I turn it down, go for landing, 3,000 feet. 10 and 50 feet down at four. Three and a half down, nine forward. Forward. It's true, with a touch of artistic license, that there'll be more processing power in my new XT3 than one of the four onboard computers that landed man on the moon. Houston, uh, the Eagle has landed. I'm fine, Ooh, thank, thank you. 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 Then, uh, that's what I'm expecting. <laughs> so my wife. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. bye. Perfect. There you go. Thank, Thank you very you much. Very much. Focus, focus. XT3. All right, I'm gonna try not to waffle too much, but I've got a few things I want to get off my chest about this whole Fujifilm thing. In the red corner, the Canon 5D4. In the blue corner, the Fujifilm X-T3. This will not be a high-tech review. There are folk that do that so much better than I. But I do want to cover some of the bases that uh, I've seen discussed on Facebook and in camera forums over the last week since the release of this. If you're watching this a year from now, or maybe more, the firmware time continuum, that would have worked its magic on some of the stuff being mooted today. What I want to do is explain my personal journey away from a camera system I've loved for a long, long time. Now, I've been a, a Canon, committed Canon shooter for many, many, many years. In terms of digital, I made the move from Nikon to Canon when the original 5D body was being touted as the thinking wedding photographer's camera. I loved the color. I loved the fact it felt really intuitive to use. I loved the exposure compensation wheel above the way I had to work with Nikon. They'd won the race to full frame and 1600 ISO top speed was like a dream. You heard it, 1600. This was 2005, top tech and Nikon was struggling to play catch up. Times change, of course, and uh, Nikon followed suit, but I stayed with Canon and I worked through 5D's various flavors, Mark II to three to four a couple of years back. But in the background, you see it, I'd always been cheating. I was married to my Canons, but Fujifilm had caught my eye. She'd been whispering in my ear and I was weak. The X100 introduced herself and I embraced her, though I must admit initially, I hated myself for showing any interest. The body looked great. The performance was ropey. If there was any backlit condition, the Fujifilm functioned like a tanked up best man who couldn't handle his drink. I particularly remember winning a cockpit prize on a holiday flight from Gatwick to Corfu, where we got invited as a family to go up front and my eldest son got to sit on the captain's knee. The light spilling through the windows was enough to send my fledgling photographic mistress into a free fall stall spin. This thing, it, well, it just refused to focus and I was left without a shot of our jack piloting a 737. But before I go on, I, I thought I should probably share some pictures along the way from my first professional trip out with this, the X-T3, which of course this film is all about. These are all manipulated JPEGs in Lightroom. At the time of making the film, I couldn't edit straight raw in the app. So, Fujifilm, the system that seems to have pulled at my coattails for a number of years now. 2012, I started shooting with these boxes. And now six years later, I've dipped in and out to an extent. I went through the, well, X100 to S to T to F, 
the X-Pro1 to 2, uh, the X-T2, and now this, the X-T3. And then it hit me. What flavor of camera am I enjoying shooting with most? Why was I still trusting my Canons above Fujifilm when it came, well, when it came to shooting for pound notes? I'll share because the reason was simple for me, skin tones and color technology. My main bread and butter photographic money comes from shooting weddings. I need my cameras to have a reasonable amount of dynamic range. They need to be able to shoot in low light and skin tones for me are vitally important. I might thrive on shooting reportage work, but I know what I'm called to do so. My portraits have to have strong, real skin tones. And I'll be honest, I thought the Fujifilm skin tones were, were waxy. They were just, well, <sighs> meh. They, they weren't clean, they weren't forgiving, but, 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 and it's a big but. You touched the butt. Something was nagging. Whenever I traveled, my Fujifilm cameras, not my Canons, came with me. Fujifilms. The only time the Canon cameras came out was when I was attending a wedding or, or shooting a portrait. They never traveled with me anywhere. They rarely photograph family, which is arguably the most precious thing to photograph. And most of the time they sat in darkness in a bag, in a cupboard. When the X-Pro2 arrived, I started to introduce the box to my wedding work. When the X-T2 arrived, I did the same. A little bit more though. Plus, I began to shoot portraits with it too. Weirdly, I didn't think they were necessarily technically better. Was the low light better? No. Had skin tones become comparable? Closer, yes. But they were beginning to, to excel in an area I was working more in, film work. The, the codec was better, and as a camera, it featured stuff that Canon units were determined not to provide for me. Canon wanted me to buy a cinema camera and a stills unit. There was no way they'd give me simple stuff in this box, like peaking. And then there was the weight. Wear a Canon on your hip all day with a reasonably sized quality lens, and you'd feel like you'd been lugging around a big brick all day long. Sport a Fujifilm camera and lens, and you'd feel like you had the flexibility and, and freedom of a gold medal gymnast all day long and into the evening. And that, for me, is the golden difference. Fuji is, without doubt, a Marmite brand for professional photographers. If you post something about it, on one hand, you'll get all the disciples who bounce in, get very excited and talk like they've just found the first green shoots of spring. Happy folk who sound like they've just returned from a retreat in the mountains. And on the other hand, you'll get those that seem to live to loathe the brand. Hate, 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 hate. They'll call them toy cameras, collectively round on them in Facebook groups. Loathe entirely. They'll browbeat you until you start to doubt your choice in your own mind. But it's no Leica is something you'll get if you even dare sound enthusiastic. I've had all that. I flip flop because of that too, and it's not full frame. Yeah, the full frame thing. No, it's not full frame. And as far as I know, it won't ever be. But then, as has been admirably pointed out in super videos by converts such as Zach Arias, neither is 35 millimeter, if you compare that to say 10 by eight or other large format flavors that came before. So why now, what has changed my mind? Well, for starters, when I look back through my back catalog of the last three, four years, many of my favorite pictures and moments have been captured using Fujifilm cameras. This box, many of my historic fears with this box, I think at last can be laid to rest. So let's talk lists. What actually is in this new box that has got me filing for divorce from my faithful systems of over a decade? This is not going to be, as I say, a full tech review. You'll lose the will to live. I'm more of a, a touchy-feely chap than a guy likely to wade through a tech manual. But there are a few standouts that have my eyebrows raised. There is a new backlit sensor, number one, which by the way, packs a few more megapixels in too. The backlit sensor means low light performance will be less noisy. Stand by. I had to do some research on this because frankly, it was all Greek to me. I've read and watched a stack of stuff on this and come out with the following. Now the sensor works a little bit more like the human eye and how we convert light, which is essentially, I think, a backlit system. In tech terms, you get layers within your sensor, one being a wiring layer. When you flip a photodiode, it means there's less wiring obstruction. More photons can hit the photodiode and then, 
I lost the will to live. Suffice to say, this is a step forward and shows that Fujifilm, working with its partners who make the important part of this camera, have worked to create a solution for something that smaller sensors with ever increasing resolution fight with. Will it make my pictures less digitally noisy and low light? Yes. Also, I can autofocus in darker situations than ever before. And for that, it gets a hearty tick. Wait. My Canon camera bag with the same array of focal lengths weighs around about 15 kilos, give or take. The Fujifilm kit bag is 8.8 .8, with some extra stuff actually in there too, like sound kit. It's not an exact science uh, and completely level playing field, but it's certainly the kind of kit weight that I can travel with far more happily. So, tick. Auto focus and focus point. So, phase detection now has 100% coverage across your image. Now that is a massive leap. The advances in following faces and preferring right eye over left eye and uh, flipping that as well, well that'll make short work of those tracking shots like recessionals and confetti moments. Face and eye detection is now available in movie shooting mode too and actually you can set up your preferences for how AF works independently between stills and filming. That's flexibility so I'm going to give that hearty big tick. I didn't use my vertical grip with the X-T2 for a couple of reasons. I couldn't balance it on the gimbal system I had and it seemed pointless trying to work with lighter kit if you were just trying to bring it up to the same weight as what I already had. Yes, you needed the grip on the X-T2 for certain power boosting features and things like the headphone jack. Now you don't. Tick. Okay, on the video front, there's a stack of features which I'm going to cover in another video. Uh, you've got 4K at 60pm, 420, 10-bit. There's the opportunity to record at 10 megabits per second. The read speed in video is better for 4K. Eterna Film Simulation Mode is now on board. Actually, for me, the only thing that's really missing is, is onboard image stabilization. If you start comparing apples with a slightly more established X-H1, that doesn't seem fair because the X-H1 is, is bigger by a mite. All in all, it's a tick, but let's come back and do a more dedicated review on video in a week or so. Color, so color, big point. These are JPEGs, so I've not been able to do quite the immediate test with the RAWs in Lightroom that I'd like. So far though, rendition of skin, is so much better. Low light is low light, and pink up lighters can <laughs> on any parade regardless of how much money you dropped on your camera system. But I can see a difference immediately over that of my X-Pro2 and by extension X-T2. I don't tone my black and whites in terms of warm hues, but now you can do that in camera. I'm gonna play with that, I'll come back to you. Tick. Power. Now, I bought a stack of extra batteries don't know why, because consumption, well, that's been improved radically. This was always a bugbear for me, but um, again, it's a trade-off, isn't it? If you want a smaller camera, blah, 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 blah. Some say in efficiency terms, this camera and battery set uh, performs better by 10%. Some say as much as 20%. I shot well over 2,000 frames. I formatted a couple of cards on the way, so I can't be totally accurate, but I'm on the fifth battery between two bodies. I know, I know I would have been hitting seventh and eighth before. Um, so, tick. Screen, it's gone touch sensitive, though I rarely use touch screen on any camera. I would, however, choose to for adjusting focus on the fly for use on a gimbal. So that's, um, that's a massive tick. I am, however, still waiting for a flip round, tilt up, tilt down screen on a Fuji camera that feels, well, feels as robust as, uh, as the Canon 6D Mark II here. Please, Fujifilm, if you're packing super filming features into your cameras that make them sing, the screen is something that, well, I just, it needs to articulate fully. Something that doesn't feel like it's it's gonna snap off if you if you face it the other direction in an awkward manner. Some, well, just something robust. This is great. Something I also struggle with is, is making the camera remote app connect to my camera. Now, Canon's system worked really well until the last iOS update, ironically. Fujifilms worked like a dream initially. I was even able to do the first firmware update through my iPhone, which was slightly unnerving. Any tips on this would be gratefully received. I love the ability to transfer images. Um, it is a feature I'll use, and so I'd like to crack this. No tick today, but we're getting there. Weather resistance. Now, we live in the UK, bear with me. It rains a lot. Usually for me, 
at weekends, when of course there are weddings. That's Murphy's Law, and here I've got, I've got a, a bucket of water. Uh, this camera is super tight when it comes to, to rainy days. With the X-T2, I remember seeing a film where somebody put uh, their camera in a, in a sink and they ran the cold tap on it for a, for a minute or so. I am that confident. I'm gonna go one step further. Bucket of water, X-T3. I'm not that daft. Suffice to say, it is resistant to what our shores can throw at it. And that's important if you're gonna stand in the rain and wait for a late arriving bridal car. It gets a tick. Will I, will I throw it in a bucket of water? Do you know what? Come back to me in six months time and, uh, and we'll, do the, we'll do the bucket of water test properly. Finally, why the change? Well, for the first time, I think for me at any rate, the Fujifilm have produced a camera that gives me the confidence I need to use it full time for all the reasons I've just mentioned and more. I have to say that I loved the X-Pro2. It felt great, but the EVF was too small. And I had real issues with my eyes feeling tired after several hours shooting with that. If uh, any X-Pro3 comes out with, well, let's not go there just yet. In the last year, I've met up with several photographers from overseas who, who, whose work I greatly admire. They got over this, it's not full frame, mine's bigger than yours, toy camera precious nonsense and they work around the world revered for their work by agencies and clients alike they're at the, the top of their game i want to make a film about cameras having soul and um you know what i i believe that that's in abundance with fujifilm it has to be because of the way i feel when i'm using it i'm on board and um this is the camera that will will take me forward yeah, this is, this is the camera. Caught up in the flashing light Keeps a dead in my mind Leading me on like it's whatever We could go on but we should know better We can't go on again Cause you seem like you want it back 